So yeah. I said, if we don't get her now, I'm not going to get her. So <laughs> It's true, probably. See what she can do. <laughs> Hello, this is Lance Cardoza. Live every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., I bring you Should Business be. Leaders Live. I talk to business leaders throughout the valley and abroad, and we talk about the trials and tribulations of being an entrepreneur or being in business or being a creative mind in our Central Valley. And what? Facebook Live. How are you doing? We're already on Facebook Live. This is Julia Lopez. Hello. <laughs> Hi. She's from CBS 40. From AM 1680, this is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind the scenes story of the business shakers and movers in the valley and beyond. And now, here's your host, Lance Cardoza. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Business Leaders Live. We're, uh, we don't hear ourselves, Woody, just to let you know, but uh, we have those occasional issues <laughs> going on. But Woody's coming into the studio to fix that right now. Every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., we have Business Leaders Live. And I, oh, now I know why. There you go. It helps when you plug things in. They didn't have the headset plugged in. That's what it was. <laughs> Julia. <laughs> The uh, Business Leaders Live every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. I bring you a different business leaders business leader throughout the valley and abroad. And uh, Julia is with CBS 47. Julia, thank you for being on the program. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. This is We were just talking about it, how early this is for sports people. Yeah, so, so <laughs> when she says sports people, for people that have been living under the rock and, and they don't know who Julia Lopez is, you're with sport. You do Sports Central mm -hmm. on CBS 47, Eyewitness News, and you take care of sports. So everything in the valley and abroad with sports is your job. Yeah, and um, it is a duopoly, so we are with KC24 as well at the NBC. So we do both sides, and it's a little bit double the work, but um, it's a good time just to get out in the valley and get those stories and talk to the athletes and the coaches and get those out there. So when you when you went through school. And did you always know that this is what you wanted to do to work in sports and news? Was that your goal? Well, I played sports growing up. I was a soccer player mainly, and then I transitioned into softball. I added softball a little bit later down the line. Um, but I just loved sports. I loved being around it. My dad was a sports broadcaster. I was, grew up around that as well. So um, I just knew that I wanted to do something with sports. And if I wasn't going to become a professional soccer player, I could talk about it for a living. And so, so here you are, and now you're going out and you put together news packages. You go out and you cover sports from high school sports to our collegiate sports. I see you at the Fresno Grizzlies, the AAA affiliate of Houston Astros, or excuse me, AAA affiliate of the Washington Nationals. And uh, so I always see you out there at Chichancy Park all the time. Uh, so w what a fun job. That's it the key. Like, it's something different every day. It's not a five to nine job or nine to five. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's so See, early in the morning. Yeah, it's early. She yeah. said, how do you do this so early? I'm like, it's 9 a.m. Yeah. I'm like on my fifth meeting. And usually I'm asleep trying to catch up with myself. Yeah, because we go to sleep super late. We're on at 11 o'clock. And then by the time you get off set and you unwind and you just kind of take a relaxer, it's just like, okay, now it's about two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so yeah. maybe two, three o'clock. And it's, so. it's your five o'clock. You're, you're wrapped yeah. up and you're chilling at home. So when you were going through school, what was the bug? Was it your dad that was sort of the, you were bit by that bug. You saw what he was doing and you said, I can do that. Was that, was that it? I think so. I think I saw him just so happy coming home from work. Um, just being at games, he would take me to minor league baseball games, the Albuquerque Dukes back in the day. Now they're the Isotopes. Yeah. Um, I would go over there with him all the time, and he was just so happy just talking about sports, and just that was his natural habitat, I should say. And I just – he. He gave me the passion, I guess, too, like just like seeing it and the adrenaline rush, too. When you go live, when that camera's on and the red light is right there, like you're, you're like, all right, game time. And then you just got to go. <laughs> and you got to go like the lights on. There's no you turning back. Exactly. Yeah. And I love that feeling. Like, that's what I got when I used to play sports, too. You know, when like that whistle blew or, you know, you see the first pitch, you're like, OK, now it's game time. That's so. game time. All that butterflies and the work up before that, it gets to that moment where yeah. it's very real. It's exactly. time to go. Thank anybody joining us, and if you're joining us on Facebook Live, that's at 
Talk Radio, 1680 KGED. You can get us at Facebook Live, and you can see Julia Lopez. And I am the studio here and uh, in the down in the tower area in central Fresno here. And you can also catch us on the dial here at 1680 AM or online at my1680.com. Anywhere in the world, you can catch the show every Tuesday morning at 9 AM. Julia, when you first came to the market, you've been here now. CBS 47 has been about four years. Yep. Exactly. Four years. Yep. And when is your anniversary coming up? Is it close? In October. October. Yeah. So you're creeping up on the four year mark. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. And so, and I love that uh, what CBS 47 does, and you see a lot of markets, sort of their sports department gets smaller and smaller, it's sort of like in music in schools tends to get smaller and smaller, but Sports Central, you guys really, from Bulldog Insider and everything else that you do, you really have a big emphasis on sports in our valley in a big way. And the big sport that's coming up that takes a lot of the time of uh, the broadcasters in sports is football. And uh, so that's that's uh, right around the corner. These 9 a.m. mornings would be even earlier for you at exactly. that point. <laughs> yeah. And we're not just talking about games. We're talking about practices and press conferences and um Usually the practices start around 8 o'clock, and we'll be there, too, getting getting some uh, VO, some video of them just practicing, and then having to come back and get interviews with the players. Um, so it's definitely – it's, and then you got to factor in high school football, too. So literally on – so you have NFL Thursday, high school Friday, college Saturday, uh, NFL Sunday, NFL on Monday. So it's completely – just football. Yeah, just <laughs> so, football the whole time. Yeah. So give me give me an idea. And just so someone listening here on the show, Business Leaders Live, can get an idea of what it's like for Julia Lopez. So when you, you go and you hit the gym, you get ready for your day, you go in about what time and what happens when you go into the studio? So I try to go in around 3 o'clock. I like to see what's going on. Um, I always check Twitter first when I wake up just to see what's going on. Um, that's the best way to get my information on, you know, the big news of the day, um, especially sort of when leads, it, leads yeah. of what's going on. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you like to check some of the local stuff, some of the national stuff, just so you're informed. Um, I like to go on ESPN.com just to read some of the articles before. And then when you get to the station, um, a lot of people don't know this, but you have to produce your own show as a sports anchor. You got to produce it. You got to write it. You got to edit it. You got to shoot it. If you're going to put some local stuff in there, you got to shoot it yourself, edit it, and then you have to anchor it. And when you say you shoot it, it's not like it just arrives to you. Mm -hmm. You've got to go track down your interview, get it lined up, uh, go to them, be there, get the stuff, come back, put the packages together, then write it. It's not as easy as what you're saying. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, foreground work before you even get to the point of the interview. Yeah. And doing that. And yeah. then you come back and put then put your stories together. Mm -hmm. And then as you're all ready to go, there's big breaking news. In sports. Gotta love it. <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> yeah. And it changes everything that you just prepared and put in place. And now you're writing again and you're getting ready again. Uh, that, that happens often. Yeah. Right? It happened with the John Carberry yeah. uh, news that came down. The um, passing of John Carberry. Yeah. yeah. And the John Carberry was the founder, him and his wife, Diane. They founded the Fresno Grizzlies and they brought it with the Diamond Group and got the Grizzlies started and uh, had the team in 98. And then the first uh, couple years when they built the new big Chichancy Park uh, we just laid John to rest. Uh, Saturday was his funeral, and uh, there was uh, some great. Um, Alan Autry spoke and did such a great job giving a testament to John's uh, drive to make sure that stadium was built here in Fresno. And uh, there was a lot of great people, Tom Summers, and everybody surrounded Diane, and it was beautiful. So I'm glad you brought up John Carberry, yeah, because uh, he was an amazing man. He was really a, a guy who was a mentor for me too, and he had no uh, fear. He would never quit. Uh, he was constant. And some people would call that a con man. Uh, I didn't. I called it uh, a guy that believed and saw the light through the trees when other people would say, it can't happen here. It won't happen here. And he knew Fresno was the market. And he had plenty of opportunity to take this team and put it in Portland wow. uh, and was ready to pull the trigger. And Alan um, heard that news and said, uh, John, um, you know, maybe it's, Maybe that's what you want to go do. And, and John was like, no, I'm not leaving. I'm committed to Fresno and it's going to happen here. Uh, you have that commitment for me and I believe in this. So, uh, so glad he did because this crown jewel, this beautiful stadium, great triple A baseball right here in yeah. Fresno. It's amazing. And I don't think people understand how fortunate we are to have a triple A 
stadium here and how nice it is. Yes. When you walk around and you go to other stadiums across the nation, um, this one stands out. It really is a gem. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and what this new ownership has done a great job of even upgrading it and keeping it uh, vibrant and modern and uh, it's just beautiful stuff. So I'm glad you brought it up and bringing up Carberry, but that was breaking news and that, that changed your night uh, in and then you have to reproduce your show and put it together. But that's the exciting part of what you do. It is, yep. But so you put everything down and then uh, breaking news happens. And then I get a phone call 10 minutes before saying, all right, Julia, you're leading in the A block. And then I'm still cutting highlights for baseball <laughs> that's coming <laughs> down too. So I'm like trying to do a few things at once and I'm trying to put that in. But um, yeah, it's definitely fun. I like being on edge and I like having that deadline and wondering if you're going to make it or not. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> Julia Lopez is in the studio right here at Business Leaders Live. You can catch us here every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. right here on Talk Radio 1680 KGED. We're going to take a short break and more with Julia Lopez with CBS 47 when we return right here. We're still on Facebook Live, just nice. to remind you. All right. <laughs> Hello, Facebook Live. I don't know if they can hear us, but... Uh, are we are we good with the <laughs> everything going good still on Facebook Live? We're still up. Cool, cool, nice. cool, cool stuff. So when we come back, I'm gonna share it. You can do that too if you want to. Share what? You could share it from the Talk Radio 1680 KGD. Are you? Is it on Twitter? Uh, Facebook Live. Oh, okay. And then you can put it on Twitter. Yeah, I'll probably do that because I don't usually. I got to get better at Facebook. I was such a, It's good for video. I know. Yes. So good. It's the leader for video and, and then it'll push your content, you know. Yeah. But uh, Twitter's good for messaging and bringing people to the information. I think I think that's if you host your video stuff or highlights or clips. Mm -hmm. It's Definitely. great. If anybody if you have any questions or anything, we'll try to get to those or David will on on our social media. Mike Bowman, how are you doing, my brother? I noticed you're on here. You're supposed to be working this morning. What are you doing listening to the radio? <laughs> you're on Facebook Live. <laughs> cool, cool. When we come back, we'll talk about, uh, let's talk about going through school. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. And then, and then what led to, uh, how did you get here to Fresno? And mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. What a journey. <laughs> yeah. Talk a little bit about what your dad did, too. I was just talking to John Traub. He's the vice president there at the Isotopes. Oh, nice. Ken Young that owns Isotopes because they're talking about doing uh, concerts and events that, uh, that would be a I'm perfect working. Spot. Yeah, I'm working with that with stadiums across yeah. the country. It's right yeah. by the campus. You know, this it's right by right New there? Mexico. Yeah, it's like UNM, uh, and then you're right there. Nice. I yeah. was wondering where they're located. I want to go out and visit their stadium. It's, and it's go nice. Go check it out. Cool. Yeah. So you grew up in New Mexico. Yes, that Albuquerque. was home, Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But I think it was a different stadium. I'm sure they've done like. They've re revamped it, you know? Yeah. Since, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sure they've done a lot of work. Yeah. Has, <laughs> how long has it been beautiful. since you've been there? Gosh. Yeah. That's a good question. 45 seconds. 2006? How's the audio in your headsets, too? It's good. It's good. Perfect, okay, because yeah. I can turn it down. I was over here trying to turn mine down because it was so loud I can barely concentrate. <laughs> And I was turning you the wrong. Even I was turning the wrong knob because I looked over here and went, "Wait a minute, that's three, not one." <laughs> <laughs> so I was blowing my eardrums out. Yeah. You're like I can't even hear myself, and then. Hey, Joe from uh, KC24 is on too. Nice, Jordan Weeby. How are you doing, Jordan? <laughs> this is just on my Facebook. I don't know awesome. who's on talk radio. <laughs> We're coming back. Starbucks, you owe me a, that should be worth a free drink at least. You are listening to Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind the scenes story of the business shakers and movers in the valley and beyond. Once again, here's Lance Cardoza. Welcome back everybody to Talk Radio 1680 KGED. I'm reminding everybody we're wrapping up the nominations for this year's, <clears throat> excuse me, class of 2019 40 under 40. And I'm looking on uh, my Facebook, where I'm streaming right now, uh, sharing the Talk Radio 1680 KGED, sharing over the stream right here from the studio of Business Leaders Live and of Jordan Weeby, a former 40 under 40. Mike Bowman, another 40 under 40. Uh, Joe, not yet. Joe, Joe's what? Joe's 22 years old, 21, something <laughs> like that. He's young, but maybe not that 
young. <laughs> not that young. But there's a lot of stars there at CBS and KC24. And we got to talk to the big VP now, Mr. Rosenfeld. Got to get these nominations in. You'd be a great one. But the nominations are coming in for the 40 Under 40 Class of 2019. If you have somebody, and if you're a former 40 Under 40, Bowman, Weeby, make sure you go to 40, the letter U, 40.com. And put in your nomination today. It's a 250-word description of why the person should be recognized. And uh, our alumni committee will select that uh, 40 Under 40 uh, member to be in the new class of 2019's Business Street 40 Under 40. In studio, Julia Lopez with CBS 47 talking about covering sports here in the Valley and sports from everywhere and uh, the grind of the excitement of putting together your uh, anchoring the desk and being a part of the uh, sports portion before we went to break, you talked about you're, you're being thrown in the A block and the A block. Explain what the A block, that's top of the show. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so that means now everything's changed on you and you got to do a hit right at the beginning of the show yeah. now. So okay. basically, a newscast is um, divided into different blocks, A, B, C, D, and E, and there's breaks in between every block. So the A block is the lead. That's like the biggest story that's going on for the day. Sometimes sports topics are on there if it's a big story like John Carbray his yeah. passing yeah. um but usually we're in the C block or the D block that's when a sports usually hits but uh yeah when we were in the A leading that with John Carbray unfortunately some bad news but um you just got to roll with it and you got to be ready to go be ready to roll yeah. yeah and so do you think sports broadcasters sometimes are procrastinate <laughs> knowing that oh I got the C or D block I still got time and then all of a sudden yeah, the rug gets pulled out from under you. Does it happen? <laughs> it absolutely does. And I honestly have always been a procrastinator. I don't know why it is, but I just love like that feeling of, man, am I going to make this? Like I just work better under pressure. Yeah. Like that's me personally. And I don't recommend that for people yeah. that are trying to get into this, but especially kids, like kids get, get there early. Yeah. But um, I just love feeling that pressure. And I feel like that's when my best work comes out when it's just like when it's just flowing. You know, so. I, I had another broadcaster at one point uh, had said that, and she did more of the news side, and I can't remember who it was, but she got the best advice from her mom because she was the same thing. It was under pressure. Mm -hmm. And she said, honey, you, when you leave the house, because she would go put her makeup on at the studio, just get the studio first at what, two, three in the morning mm -hmm. before the early morning broadcast, and then put her makeup on. And she said, leave the house with your makeup, honey, because you never know the president could be shot uh, there could be some big world news mm -hmm. and you have to the moment you walk in that studio is go live you know wherever you are at that moment even though you're not doing live and she was like yeah 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 and she listened to her mom that day and she thought you know what i should do that she put her makeup on she headed in and it was a big world news moment she walked in the door and they said hey you're going live right now here's you know they were giving her paper and she's reading as she's walking like oh you know i hope i'm ready to go and she just went live so it was the best advice you ever had. So you put your makeup on before you head down there, right? I do, but sometimes I wear my hair up like this yeah. <laughs> while I head yeah. in because I just like to get in there and then I'll do my hair like You get there. ready to go. It takes like five minutes. I was so. going to say, you could get it done pretty <laughs> yeah. quick. The, uh, and if you want to see that hair, you go to Talk Radio, 1680 KGED, or my Facebook, and you can go on there and you can see Julia and her She's got her pebbles from, uh, what was it, the Flintstones? <laughs> Where do you go This on? is the weekend look right now. <laughs> it's the weekend right look. But yeah. you got the face on, you're ready to go. Uh, so you watched your father in the business, and that sort of is the bug. You bit the bug, that sort of the red light's on, it's time to go. And uh, you got to experience that. And that was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. And so from that point, then you're going to school and you're studying. If someone... Uh, Let's say a young person is listening to the show and they're thinking about being in this. I had Julia Vela on the show and she's uh, hoping to be working in this business more and more. Where do you start? What, what do you study and where do you start to get into this part of what you do as your career? Um, well, I just knew, well, during high school, that's when I started interning. So when I was done playing soccer or like after practice, I would go to the local TV station, which was actually my dad's competitor station because I wanted to make sure that I could get there on my own. I didn't want my dad's help. I didn't want, um, cause he was working for the ABC affiliate over there in Albuquerque. So I went with the NBC affiliate ah. and I wanted to make sure that I could 
do it on my own and that I was capable of it. And um, so I was just doing that maybe once or twice a week in high school. And then in college, I got into communications um, because it had a couple less math classes to take than journalism. So <laughs> math wasn't the thing. <laughs> and math is not my thing. It's it never has been. Yeah. Been okay. <laughs> it never has been. And I'll be, and I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so definitely just communication. And then I got in, so I was playing soccer over there a little bit. And then, um, the club team, they didn't have a D one team at the time, but I was just there getting staying in shape and stuff. And then, um, I decided to go do the student run TV station. It was called CTV at Colorado state university in Fort Collins. And I would do that. And I tried out to be a sports anchor and I got it and I was doing that. And, um, it's just, just from there, I got the bug and I knew exactly like that. I wanted to do this. And that was it. Yeah. That was, and you, you kept looking. So from Colorado, do you end up in Fresno? At no. that point, no, <laughs> no, no. So you cut your teeth there, yeah. doing covering sports in college, mm-hmm. and, and then- you get, you have internships too. Every summer, you got to find an internship, a different internship. So I was at um, Comcast Sports in San Francisco one year, ESPN in Bristol another year, um, and I just wanted to see. Okay, so I wanted to see the national level, I wanted to see a regional level, and I got my local level. So I wanted to see which one I like more, and if I'm able to do that down the road. Yeah, And um, right out of college, um, I went to Phoenix, Arizona, and I was just doing high school football online once a week. So every Friday night, I was getting paid like probably $10 an hour for one day a week. And then I had to waitress on the side the rest of the week just, just to get just by. Just to live that dream exactly. that you wanted to be in it. Yeah. yeah. And people don't understand that you got to If you want it that bad, you're going to make it work, even yeah. though that was just when you look at it now, it's just like, wow, how did you do that? Like I knew nobody in Phoenix, but I went and I decided, okay, like why not? You know, yeah, this is an opportunity. It's my foot in the door. And then from there I went to Greenville, South Carolina, um, for a startup company. And then I went to Reno, Nevada for three years and then Denver and then here. So you've cut your teeth quite a bit yeah. on sports, and it was all sports. All sports. All yeah. sports doing that. And is there any particular, I know you played softball. Mm-hmm. Is there any particular sport that you really like to cover? Baseball. Baseball. Yeah. You love baseball. Because your knowledge of baseball is great. <laughs> and I've always told the president, uh, Derek Franks of the Grizzlies, that uh, Julia is just out. Uh, we did some Facebook Lives with uh, with Next Star, and uh, it was fun doing that with yeah. you. And it was because I, I knew comfortably that you had great knowledge of baseball and you would do great. And you've even set in as a color commentator on our live broadcast for television to KAIL yeah. that we had live from the, from with Doug Greenwald right there from uh, Chichancy Park. So uh, your knowledge of baseball, your love of baseball shows through and it makes a big difference when you're, that's the stories you're covering. That's the passion you have. And I love when you're telling a story or just even out shooting pool or just talking with friends when you start to talk about a young athlete mm-hmm. and you get fired up and, and you, Julia, gets fired up. She's like, man, this guy's amazing. You know, and you start talking as a soccer player, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I've recalled that a couple of times, seeing your passion. It makes a big difference when that's your job and that's what you're doing. You're very passionate about delivering that news about our local sports. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, do you get a lot of that from when you were a kid and playing that um, sports was a big thing in your life as a kid? Oh, it was huge. It was yeah. my entire life growing up. So, yeah. so, yeah, it's a big deal. You're doing travel ball, and you learn a lot while you're playing sports as a kid. And, yeah. And to, and to be able to cover it and do that, it makes a big difference huge. when you, people can feel your excitement. Can you talk to me about being live on TV? Nothing ever goes perfect. <laughs> and there's probably a moment that you remember that it was one of those nights or something that just everything could go wrong or something was funny. Do you recall any of those stories or something that happened in your career of doing live broadcast? It happens every, a couple times a year, probably when um, maybe the director takes the wrong video or the teleprompter operate operators on the wrong story. And you <laughs> thank goodness have your scripts right in front of you. So you got to like, just take a moment. Okay. And say, all right, just show me some type of video and I'll talk about it, you yeah. know, <laughs> and we'll just go from there. But yeah, sometimes um, it gets a little confusing and sometimes it's a domino effect. But I think when it comes to 
experience, you got to experience that and you got to deal with it and you got to just move forward and kind of laugh it off sometimes. But when it happens, yeah. it's what you do at that moment that makes the difference versus going and being in paralysis. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think you just got, you can't take things so seriously too. Like humans are going to make mistakes, you know, so you got to just go from there. You can't just dwell on it. I know a lot of people want to be perfect when they get into this industry. And if they say something wrong, then they're going to like, you know, just be so upset with themselves. But, you know, mm -hmm. the next sportscast, the next newscast is a new one. So just you're as good as your last. Yeah. So And just keep being better and better what you do. Exactly. Talk about your team at Sports Central. I know you got a great, fun team that you guys have. And, uh, and like you say, you share some of your content over with NBC's KC24 as well from CBS 47. Uh, talk about Sports Central and that team. So I can't say enough good things about my team. That's Andrew and Scott, uh, Scott Bemis and Andrew Martin. Andrew's our uh, sports director. And I've been in a lot of different markets and I've had to, you know, deal with a lot of different uh, teams. And yeah. this is by far, hands down, the best team that I've ever worked with, just because how hardworking they are, how fair they are. They don't care that I'm a female talking about sports. They respect me. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, they're always there to help. I always... Anytime I have a question, they don't look down at all. It's just like, hey, like, we're a team. We're going to get through this together. And, you know, it's just, it's an unbelievable just team atmosphere that I have never been a part of before. And they're very passionate about sports themselves. Mm -hmm. And you have to be in this business. But they, you can see that with Andrew and also with uh, Bemis. And there, and there you guys are on Facebook Live. If you go to Talk Radio 1680 KGED, and that's at Talk Radio 1680 KGED, you'll see some images of Julia uh, There's Tom the, Goodwin. Yeah, Tom Goodwin. Yeah. You're a photograph with Tom Goodwin there. <laughs> so, and listening here at 1680 Talk Radio, uh, you get business leaders live every Tuesday morning. And this one, I've said for a long time, I've been wanting to get Julia Lopez in here. I love when you're speaking. I went and listened to you speak in Porterville College, I believe. And when you spoke in front of students, it's exciting to see their eyes light up and go, I could do this. This is something that I can, if you're passionate about something, do you like going and speaking to youth? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love when people are asking questions, especially, you know, the girls that are asking questions too. Yeah. I just absolutely love that. Yeah. And I, I think it, it, you're maybe motivating some thoughts in their mind that they can, they can do what they dream about because mm -hmm. you did. Yeah, definitely. You did. And I like to just say, hey, like the reality check too of it. I want to be completely honest and completely just transparent when I talk to them. Yeah, and I, I think that gives opportunity. I think a lot of times we get busy in our day and we don't take the time to find some young mind that maybe has some dreams. Give them a reality check. Let them know it wasn't easy for you. And uh, here you are today here at CBS 47. More with Julia Lopez right here on Business Leaders Live when we return here on Talk Radio 1680 KGED. Facebook Live. Hello. Thank you for chiming in. Got a whole, peop a whole bunch of people coming in here. Nice. Say hi there. The uh, So when we return, we'll talk about, because um, now we're going into our third segment. Yeah. So we'll talk about maybe football, mm -hmm. season starting. Yeah. Teams to look out for. I don't know if you have any of that uh, yeah. from the past. Mm -hmm. And then um, just talk some of our local athletes. Yeah, definitely. So we could talk about that. Okay. And then sure. uh, uh, I would say at the end, we'll fit in anything else that you want to promo for CBS 47. Uh, maybe about uh, your future, what you you plan to to do with your career. Mm -hmm. So, and that's going to yeah. be the last block. Yeah, we'll okay. do that in the last block. Cool. Yeah, sure. Some of your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. I wonder if uh, Joseph's still on here. Joe, Joe, are you still on here? <laughs> you have any dreams, Joe? <laughs> I don't know if they can hear us during the break. I'm not really? sure because I don't hear. I think David said. Oh, they can? Yeah. Okay, because I don't hear us. I think he takes us off for commercial. This is fun. It's early, Doug but Greenwald it's fun. is watching. Is he? Doug, Doug is awake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doug Greenwald, can you hear us right now? We're during the commercial time right now of the show. Yeah, radio is fun. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can wear your hair anyway, you know, like yeah. me. I wear my hair anyway. <laughs> How long does that last? Does that last all day? All day. Wow. Yeah, I you go to sleep like this. I wake up like yeah, this. No. Sure. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What I do just you mess use, it up though? like that. Psh, done. <laughs> you 
you got to use, is it like hairspray or is it gel? No, or? it's like a paste. Oh, paste. Yeah. Within seconds. Yeah. Wet it. Oh, like a balm. That's it done. Nice. That's good. You know, and the nice part about it is it can be messy and it still works. But right now, and I know, I'm going to make sure we're not coming back. Mom's probably watching. And mom's going to be probably saying, kid, you need to get a haircut. <laughs> oh, man. That's okay. It's getting, it's getting up there. It's pretty high. Yep. <laughs> It's a mess. I know, Mom. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she hasn't nah. chimed in yet, but usually she says, hey, you need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know it's time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mom's my barometer with getting my haircut. Yeah. Uh, Doug Greenwald, can can we hear you? Type a message, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Greenwald, radio broadcaster. Awesome. Alan Greenwald, his father was the radio broadcaster for San Francisco Giants for many years. Doug for the Grizzlies for many, many years was hired by John Carberry. Yeah. yeah. Stand by. I do need to cut that hair. (laughs) (laughs) Giving you the inside story of business leaders in the Valley and beyond. This is Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza. Welcome back, everybody, to Business Leaders Live right here on Talk Radio 1680 KGED. It's that time of year again where it's time to put your nominations in for the 40 Under 40. We're getting ready to recognize the class of 2019 Business Streets 40 Under 40. You go to 40, the letter U, 40.com, and put in your 250-word description of your honoree that you would like to get recognized. An alumni committee will select the new class in mid-September. We'll be announcing the new class, Business Streets 2019, 40 under 40. So go to 40, the letter U, 40.com, and put your nomination in today. And to catch past episodes of Business Leaders Live, please go to LanceCardoza.com, and you can cast all, catch all the past episodes, like this one today with Julia Lopez with CBS 47 Sports Central, uh, thank you again for being on the show. I'm very excited to have you here. Uh, we were talking about uh, making an impression on young minds, and uh, your father made an impression on you when you got to experience what he was doing, and you saw him excited about the end of the day and what he was doing, and actually to go there in person in Albuquerque and actually see what he was doing, uh, you were bitten by the bug. And I th- I tell people this all the time, too. Uh Young people that have dreams and hopes, it's terrible to crush those dreams. But at the same time, it's great to give them the reality of it, the harsh reality sometimes. And Julia, being a sports broadcaster and news broadcaster, you've bounced all over the place before you landed uh, what you would call the dream job. Absolutely. It's not easy. It's not. But that's also the fun part. You know, you're going East Coast, West Coast, like. Arizona, you know, Denver, yeah. you're going wherever the job is. And I think a lot of people have an idea in their head, like, oh, I'm going to get to ESPN, like after my first on-air job. It doesn't work like that. It, yeah. Like sometimes people get lucky. Sometimes, you know, it happens. But I'm just saying you have to enjoy the journey. And that's just one thing that I've learned. I like. I feel like every stop that I made, I was kind of trying to rush through it. Mm-hmm. I wish I would have rather just enjoyed it rather than looking ahead as much as I was but now i'm really excited just to be here and just enjoy fresno and the community and i'm this is one of my favorite stops and hopefully i'll be here for a little while more (laughs) yeah so four years now you're working with a great team with andrew martin and also scott bemis and with sports central it's a big difference when you're working with people that not only not it's not always fun when you're doing an internship but when you take time to absorb it in and find out These people have been doing this job for many years for a reason, and they're good at certain areas of what they do, and you'll be able to absorb that and take that in. That's the whole idea of an internship. One, can you handle the grind? Can you be a part of this? And and then absorb from one of the best in that business. And like you said, take more time when you went around to just take that in. Yeah. It's a big part. When I was at ESPN, the one person, I talked to a lot of different anchors over there, but the one person that really stood out was Linda Cohn. Um, She's just a veteran, has been there for a long time, uh, has so much respect within the sports world and just having, just going into her office. I was the one that had to set up the meeting, obviously, because she didn't know who I was. I was an intern over there. So I just emailed her and said, hey, do you have a moment that I can stop by so we can talk? I can pick your brain a little bit. And 
you have no idea how much I appreciate that when girls want who are wanting to get into this industry come up to me and say, hey, can you just take a few minutes? I will never say no. I, I'm too busy or no, like no way. Yeah. I would 100 percent talk to them, give them like advice if they ask for it. Yeah. And I think because you were like you say, you respect that when you were coming up through that, too. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be handed to you. And I tell young people all the time, you made that opportunity with an email and an introduction to get that meeting with Cone. So I think uh, a lot of times don't be afraid to ask. Yep. And they're always going to be that one that's going to make you feel. And a lot of people say, and this is the millennial side of the world and business, that I don't want to be made to feel stupid. And being made to feel stupid is not asking the question. If they react in a way that's not helpful, you probably didn't want advice from that person in the first place. Great job. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. So ask the question, get the advice because the professionals in this business or in any business will always give you the time of day and will always make it happen. And if it doesn't happen the first time, don't be afraid to ask a second time. Maybe you caught them on a bad day. Exactly. It happens. We've all had them. So I always tell young people, and I had one actually in the studio, and I'm going to bring her name up, Addie. <laughs> she was sitting here in the studio and the end of the broadcast, I think it was last week or the week before, she introduced herself for a second time. I guess she reached out to me several years ago and wanted to just shadow uh, my involvement with sports and working in the business and be able to just be a part of, and I guess I shined her on. I don't know. I didn't reach back to her. Yeah. I was just busy. Exactly. I vaguely remembered it when she was telling me and I felt so bad, but never worry about asking a second time. We're, we're here to help. We've all been there. We were in the trenches and we're still in the trench today. And what we're doing, it's just a whole new trench. We just have a better idea of how to handle it. Yes. So, and sometimes we don't. Yeah, so, exactly. We just go. So, we get so go. busy. So yeah. don't worry about asking again. Uh, forge forward and uh, you always can pick up information to help better hone your skills and what you're going to be doing. So with sports in the valley because you're getting ready for football there's a lot of great stars that come out of our valley and you get to experience the new ones all the time and you get a pulse on it what do we have to look forward to this year in football are we talking about fresno state or are we talking about high school or all the above all the above <laughs> yeah you see new stars cropping up all the time well man when it comes to high school the valley just produces so much talent and when you look at it look at uh kendall milton from buchanan the running back he is committed to go to Georgia, and all the SEC schools were after him, all the Pac-12 schools. He could have gone anywhere in the nation, and he decided to go to Georgia, which has a phenomenal, you know, just program mm -hmm. um, and a historic program as well. So um, when you look at just, like, what the Valley produces, it's pretty incredible. And then Jalen Green, remember when he was at Memorial, one of the top prospects at in basketball, yeah. um, he – He's going to be one of those guys that's going to just light up in the NBA. Like, he's going to be awesome. But when it comes to Fresno State football, um, it's going to be an exciting year. Uh, they're coming off of a 12-2 and season. They have that Mountain West Championship, also the Vegas Bowl win. Um, no Marcus McMarion, the quarterback. So it's going to be interesting to see how Jorge Reyna slides into that starting role at QB. Um, Keyshawn Johnson was their star wide receiver. He's obviously with the Cardinals right now. So there's a lot of question marks, but a lot of open spaces for talented guys that are right behind them to make an impact. And I'm really excited about this uh, wide receiver named Darion Grimm. Um, I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of him. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be, he's going to be a guy to watch for, for sure. He's, when you talk to him, he's the most humble guy, <laughs> which yeah. is rare for a wide receiver sometimes. But um, he's very humble. He's got his head on straight, and uh, you just you kind of just are rooting for him to have a good year. And I think he can. Uh, what school? For Fresno State. That's Fresno State. Okay, yeah. Fresno State. And mm -hmm. I knew the name. I hadn't followed where he's from. Okay. Yeah. And this first year, first year. No, he's State. a senior actually. Year. So senior. He, yeah, he's a senior. So he's kind of been yeah. hidden a little bit, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a JUCO transfer. Had a spring at Nebraska, and now he's at Fresno State. So um, nice. Yeah, so this we'll see might how be his big breakout year. Yeah, this is it. And then Michael, the defense. I am so excited about the defense for the Bulldogs. Um, you have Michael Walker transitioning from defensive end to linebacker. Now that they have a lot of openings over there, Juju Hughes at DB. Um, it's just it's going to be really Juju fun. Juju Hughes. He's a Hanford alum. A Hanford, Hanford Bulldog. Alum. Yep. I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just with a name off. like that, you've got to go all the way. You should see his smile though too. He has probably the best smile you've ever seen. <laughs> ah, 
Beautiful. Perfect. He'll be good for TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. So, they, and it's it's fun to see you in your wheelhouse because boy, you start talking about sports, you just like <laughs> turned on the red light, clicked on. Exactly, <laughs> it's right around the corner. They're at USC this Saturday, so they open up at the Coliseum in LA. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's already here. So you get to see the practices. You're there, boots on the ground, and you're seeing it develop. You're seeing Fresno State pull it together, uh, and everybody gets excited about the red wave and football and the excitement. Uh, and it starts early for you and you get to see it, uh, coach and you work with coach quite a bit. Yep. What's your opinion with coach? Coach and, Tedford's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. He has, a great guy. you just got to like respect a guy that has so much experience, has been through it all. Um, and he knows exactly like what he's doing, you know, yeah. like he, he's very respectful when it comes to interviews and once once he's out of like the whole like coach mind, like he's a very fun guy to like just talk to. When he lays late, yeah. Yeah, lets the hair down. <laughs> yeah, but he's a really awesome guy, and I think Fresno State's very fortunate to have him at the helm right now. Yeah, how about team wise? Because you you get to see the practices, and he dials in with the team real well. Mm -hmm. Do you get to see that dynamic? Uh, is the team real receptive of coach? Oh yeah, yeah. When he talks, they listen. They listen. <laughs> you know? yeah. it's, it's just pure respect out of that. And um, why wouldn't you? When you know he's produced like athletes like Aaron Rodgers, Marshawn Lynch, like all these guys, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> that have made it to the NFL and have done well. So. Right, so I've got a, I'm going to change the subject quick, real quick. Quincy Poindexter. So, you know, Quincy. Yeah. Pondexter. Pondexter. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pondexter. What did I say? Poindexter. Yeah. <laughs> Pondexter. <laughs> so, you know, it's easy to get. So Quincy, if you happen to catch us on social media, I had, uh, we had the taco truck throwdown. taco truck Throwdown yeah. nine. So we had Goody Mob was there, CeeLo Green. It was down at Chichancy Park. Too Short. Great bands down there. Lucha Extreme Wrestling on second base, which I own. And I was there with President Derek Franks. And we're standing by the ring. And this guy comes up and says, hey, man, I want to get in the ring, bounce off the ropes a little bit. Just do a little something in there. I always want to do it as a kid. Uh, you know, what's it going to take? I'm like, well, there's a whole bunch of people here. We can't do that. Derek's the boss. Talk to Derek. Derek goes, nope, nope. He's the boss. He owns the ring. I said, no. He goes, oh, well, I got to go do a little thing. I'll come back. Can I get up in the ring and do something? I said, well, come back and see me at the end of the event. And I felt bad. And the guy walked away. And Derek goes, I recognize him. Who is that? So we look up on stage, introducing Too Short. It's Quincy Pondexter. <laughs> that was the guy. Nice. <laughs> so he was the guy that wanted to get up in the ring. I felt so bad. He was with all his friends and... And I felt bad, but I guess as a childhood dream, he always wanted to probably be a WWE superstar. <laughs> and Quincy wanted to get up in the ring. I'm embarrassing you, Quincy, but the offer's there. Look us up, luchaextreme.com, and we'll take care of you. We'll get you up in the ring at some point. But uh, he was a great guy. He was a great guy, and he was there introducing Too Short of all things, and he wanted to get up in the ring. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he could have got Too Short to come over and uh, throw down some rhymes right there in the ring. <laughs> that would be awesome. It was a great event. It was packed. We had a lot of people there at Taco Truck Throwdown. A little eight mile rendition. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was great. Good stuff nice. was going on. But the uh, when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit more, also too, about uh, what's next in the life of Julia Lopez. I'm sure you have some dreams of doing some big stuff in the future. <laughs> but like you said, you got a lot more road to cover here, right here in Fresno, and you're enjoying your time with CBS 47. So we come back as Julia Lopez as my business leader live guest of the week. You can join us every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. right here on Talk Radio, 1680 KGED. And also join us on Facebook at Talk Radio, 1680 KGED. We're live. All right. We're still on Facebook. All right. We've got a whole bunch of people on here. Nice. Who else do we have? Uh, let me just respond to this. It's funny because, especially media people, mm -hmm. will be in full-fledged discussion, and then all of a sudden, everybody's stuck on their phone, updating social. Yep, exactly. <laughs> what we need to do, communicating. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to add this picture of the video to Insta. <laughs> yeah, when you when you mentioned Fresno State football, I just like, there's so much going on clicked. with that team. Yeah, I'm like, man. <laughs> now, the... You were mentioning the wide receiver. Is it the wide receiver? 
What was his name again? Darion Grimm. Grimm. Number seven. Okay. Number seven, yeah. Darion Grimm. Mm -hmm. So I've heard the name and I couldn't figure out where I heard. Yeah. So he's the Fresno State wide receiver. Yeah. He should good, be the leader of that. Yeah. Such a good guy. Yeah. And like also um, one of the DBs, Jaron Bryant. Mm -hmm. Got to keep an eye out for him too. Because, yeah. J A R O N. But last year, I, I don't think I made one game. I hmm? wanted to, but I was always either out of town or there was something going on. You need so to go to a game. I'm this year for sure. Yeah. You have to. And I get invited to the tailgates all the time, and I yeah. always miss the tailgate. I need to get out there this year. Oh, for sure. It's gotten like, it's so much fun. And I'll catch most of it stuff from your reports from on yeah, the field. Definitely. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be at the USC game. That's going to be Andrew and Scott. Ah. So, but I was at the UCLA game last year, so it's like, okay. Oh, okay. And it's Scott's a Trojan, so oh, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Bemis. Bemis yeah. is the man. He's, He's awesome. probably sleeping right now. Oh, uh, no, he has kids, so probably not. <laughs> oh, yeah, he has kids, yeah. You don't get to sleep. That's a 24-7 Oh, yeah. It's so this will be our final episode. So or, we get anything. Is there anything that you want to talk about on the air that you haven't? Um, not really. Any mentors in school? Mm, I think it would be Linda, but Linda. we already talked about her. Linda Cohn? Yeah. Cool. Facebook Live, we're on commercial break right now on Talk Radio 1680, so that's why it's a little downtime and checking our phones here. <laughs> I've had people look before and go, I saw you on the radio, but you guys were like, <laughs> you weren't talking. I'm like, well, that's commercial. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're catching up in between. <laughs> Janelle, is that Janelle? She used to work for the station. Was there a Janelle? Mm -hmm. She's on here. Nice. I think she's in Texas now. Maybe. Yeah, she is Houston. Is it Houston? Yeah. Yeah, Janelle, how are you doing? I didn't recognize her last name. <laughs> That's the other thing, too, because you got so many people that change their name for on air, and then their Facebook is something different. I don't accept them. <laughs> yeah, you won't? I want some, I don't know who they are. And later they say, I'm so-and-so. The... Really? And then I look at the face. Oh, yeah. Okay, I should have known that. I'm glad you mentioned that, that sometimes, like, an email gets lost, you know? In like a crazy day of news. Yeah. And why not try it again? That was huge. It is. Don't give up. Mm -mm. You are listening to Business Leaders with Lance Cardoza, the behind the scenes story of the business shakers and movers in the valley and beyond. Once again, here's Lance Cardoza. Welcome back, everybody. Just another reminder, right around the corner, we are recognizing the class of 2019's 40 Under 40, and it's time to put your nominations in by going to the website 40, the letter U, 40.com, and nominate your uh, potential, uh, your honoree for the 40 Under 40. So again, that website is 40, the letter U, 40.com, and recognize someone in that should be recognized here in the Valley as a business streets 40 under 40 in studio as my guest this week and getting to the tail end of the show, Julia Lopez with CBS 47 and during the break, and you can catch it when you're watching us on Facebook live. Uh, I like to always give advice to young people. And I love, I had seen you speak to uh, some college kids and the questions were almost as long as the presentation. Uh, and it was exciting to see how much excitement, uh, and it was a Porterville college, I believe is where you spoke. And it was, a uh, it makes a big difference in a young person's life to give them that time of day and give them a little bit of hope. But I think one of the points that I mentioned earlier, and it does, I'd like to repeat it again that, uh, and I always say no is yes, disguise or no is a, a yes in disguise. And a lot of times they say no for a reason, or they don't get back to you for a reason. Uh, and it's like in sales, too. If you just took no for an answer, you'd get nowhere. So I always say, uh, stay persistent. Um, they weren't going to help you in the first place. So <laughs> if they say, hey, kid, get out of here, you know, it uh, then you just need to leave them alone. But stay on top of it, and they'll appreciate that. And a lot of times, too, I sometimes want them to want it more than just make it easy for them. That ask me again. 
ask me a different time because the approach maybe wasn't right. Uh, and that makes them better at what they do and don't give up. Uh, and in your business, you probably had plenty of opportunity as you bounced around to different markets mm -hmm. to be discouraged and to give up. Right out of college, especially, Yeah, you know, when you have zero experience and you're just sending tapes, I literally probably sent at least 80 tapes to different markets and different stations and didn't get a bite. And then I decided to do the Phoenix job one day a week and had to just wing it, you know, and you're and, waiting tables yeah. and then doing what you wanted to do one day out of the week, yeah. but you didn't give up. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. just your foot in the door. And then it really does push you. It's, it asks you, how much do you want it? Yeah. So are you willing to sacrifice and to, to have a chance to do this? Mm -hmm. The, uh, if you were to tell a young person that wanted to get into this business, uh, what's the first thing they need to do? Internships are really powerful. Absolutely. But what's, what's the first thing they need to do? I want, they need to know the business of sports and need to have an appreciation for it. I think that's Absolutely. a big, big piece. Yeah. Um, I think the key is if you love talking about sports, then that's, then that's awesome. You know, you can't fake loving sports or fake knowing sports because a real sports fan is going to be able to <laughs> see that right off the TV. Yeah. So they want to, they want to know that you're credible. So you need to do your research. You got to read a lot as well. Turn on sports center and <laughs> check to see what's going on there and just take tips, you know, just see how, someone does it just look at um neil everett neil everett's one of my favorite you know sportscasters now and i just love how just dry sense of humor he is but he just he's like a fun guy to watch and he's passionate about it and he knows it and i just love like just kind of taking tidbits and just i don't know you can just tell when somebody knows yeah. their stuff and you take and that's how you create your persona and what you do and in, in, in a way you're an entertainer you're, you're on there and you're entertaining people, bringing them what they want to hear, that you take some of the greats in the business as broad, sports broadcasters and you make it your own, like something they do or they say or how they present it and, and weave that into what you are and create who you're going to be. And uh, I think what I like about when I see you, you're very authentic. You're very you. It's you delivering it. It's like you said, you can't fake that because when you do, a sports fan sees right through it and you, you just, you're very passionate about it. And it's uh, it makes a big difference when someone's watching a person delivering that news because uh, there are broadcasters that don't cover sports and just cover the news. You can tell they're miserable mm -hmm. and you see that and you feel that when they're talking. So uh, it makes a big difference when you have passion for it. So that's one of the biggest advice is passion and research and being able to know your and credibility credibility yeah mm -hmm. and know it and like you said when you get up in the morning too you're checking espn and twitter and everything you're finding your leads and you know your sources that you're going back to the well for each day looking at those sources so do you do you find that uh you love what you do you know you're going to be here for some time uh that you don't plan to be going anywhere but as the future have you thought about what's next in Julia Lopez's horizons? Like, what would you dream to do What what the, in this business? I think as a kid, you know, my dream has always been to just talk about baseball. So I think just the big picture and the ultimate goal would be MLB Network. You know, that would be the ultimate goal. But other than that, it would be, probably be a regional network, uh, pregame, postgame show um, for a baseball team and yeah, I just I just love breaking it down and asking questions. If you have an analyst there, just you know, ask a lot of different questions and yeah. get the fans interested in the team, whether it's a winning season or they're having a you know great season. They're going to the World Series. Now, you mentioned math was a challenge for you through school, and it's still today. And you accept it as it's not your. But in the business of baseball, a lot of it is all math. The business of sports loaded with math. And the analysts and stuff. How do you how do you find your way through the weeds on that? See, I love stats. That's love the, yeah, that's the cool thing about it. Like you can do your research on it. Um, I don't know how they get, sometimes get the stats, <laughs> but just, we can talk about it. <laughs> and I know you that, don't know how they got to the yeah <laughs> the but, number. Okay, but when it comes to WAR and ERA, like all that stuff, like it's just an interesting it's an interesting thing in baseball. Um, yeah. And you can't fake numbers. Numbers are. <laughs> yeah. So amazing. I just saw a story real quick here. We're about a minute to wrap up, but it was a story on the umpire and it was like a robo umpire. 
where the balls and strikes were coming into the strike zone and the umpire had an earpiece and it told him if it was a strike or if it was a ball. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. It was a big story. It was out on uh, Major League Baseball. was putting it out as they're testing it. And the pitchers loved it because wow. they knew the consistency of what they were throwing was going to stay on track. So big debate about that. So there's always something in the business of baseball. But I, I'm with you, too. I like the nostalgia and... And I don't even like instant replay in baseball. It bothers me. I like to watch it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but I would hate it if I was an umpire. <laughs> or a fan. It kind of slows down the game even yeah, more. Yeah, slows know? it more. Julia, yeah. thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> We're almost wrapped up here. Appreciate your time. Love to have you back on someday. Absolutely. Count me in. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. with Business Leaders Live here on Talk Radio 1680 KGED. Thank you, Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. Yay. And uh, we'll get to you. If you have any questions, we'll get back to you. And uh, we'll talk to you next week right here on Business Leaders Live. Awesome. Awesome. Cool.